everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. Today I'm going to be doing a video where I'm going to reveal my top five most controversial opinions with regards to the 2022 NFL Draft. I'm not going to waste any time, we're just going to get into it. Let's kick off this list with the most important position in football, and maybe professional sports too. Of course, we're talking quarterback. Now, I think the general consensus between most of the draft experts or the people who follow the draft and follow college football would probably say this year would be either their favorite quarterback would be Malik Willis out of Liberty or Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh. Now, my favorite guy is going to be neither of those. Um, my favorite is actually Matt Corral from Ole Miss. Um, there's actually a reason why I really, really like Matt Corral. He reminds me a lot of Jimmy Garoppolo, but Jimmy Garoppolo in those first five games with the 49ers. You know, a guy who just can make all the throws, you know, and actually Matt Corral has a much stronger arm than Garoppolo. Garoppolo, when you'd see him throw deep, he was really like, you know, putting everything into it. Whereas Corral, there was that fantastic throw against Alabama, threw it 60 yards down the field. His feet weren't even set. It was just crazy. He has the quick release. You know, he throws a really nice spiral. And uh, I just think he has those like great leadership qualities. When, you know, you talk to teammates and you talk to former teammates of Jimmy Garoppolo, for example, recently, Emmanuel Sanders, they all love playing with and for Jimmy Garoppolo because he lays it on the line. He'll fight for those extra couple yards. You know, he's going to give it his all. And I think Matt Corral, he plays with so much heart. So you have to respect that. You know his teammates will play for it. And that's one of those intangibles that you just can't really, you know, track at the combine necessarily. It's just something that you see on the field. But as I said, throws a really nice deep ball, can throw it deep quick release I think you know give him some time to sit for a year if he goes to the right situation I think he could be a fantastic quarterback now of course he's not perfect you know there's a reason why he's not a consensus number one pick um, you know definitely his size can limit him in some ways simply because the way he runs it's a little bit reckless I would say um, he could definitely learn to not take so many big hits not to take awkward hits learning to just slide um, would be to his benefit to just having a longer career and to actually be on the field because as we all know some of the best avail abilities is for sure availability um, also some of his throws can be garoppolo-esque where you're basically just left looking at the tv and just kind of going like like what did he just see there um so i think if you give him some time maybe give him a year to sit um in an offense learn the scheme um, maybe he won't have those tendencies that Garoppolo still has as Garoppolo's been in the league for such a long time. But I think he could be a much better version than Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think in the first round, I would take happily take Matt Corral. Um, the team I'm kind of looking at, because there's a lot of different teams that could potentially go quarterback. It's a little bit hard to say. But to me, the team I'm really looking at is the New Orleans Saints. Now, we know they just had that big trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. They now have two first-round picks in the middle of the first round. They gave up first-round pick next year and second-round pick, I think, the year after that. So a lot of times to me that kind of screams that, like, hey, you're kind of maybe invested in a quarterback here. Now, they do have veteran quarterbacks there in New Orleans. Of course, they have Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill. Andy Dalton. Now, you bring in a Matt Corral in the first round, maybe you cut Andy Dalton, Taysom Hill, whatever the case may be. But I think if you give Corral a year in that offense, you know, and maybe Michael Thomas comes back and plays, Alvin Kamara, Traquan Smith, with their other first round pick, maybe they draft a receiver. Um, they have a really solid tie, uh, offensive line, and that's even after losing Taron Armstead. So overall, I think Matt Corral is my favorite guy. I like Malik Willis a lot. I think Malik Willis will for sure need a year. Um, there are definitely some flaws in his game that I'm not crazy about, um, but this video kind of want to talk a little bit more about the surprise pick that is Matt Corral is my favorite. If I actually had to give my top five quarterbacks, I think I'd go Matt Corral, Malik Willis, I'd probably go Sam Howell, Kenny Pickett, and then Desmond Ritter. So those are my top five guys. But uh, Matt Corral, keep an eye out for him. If he goes to the right situation, I think he could be really good. 
Next on the list, we are going to move to the defensive side of the ball, and we're going to be talking about safeties. And my controversial opinion here is that I actually don't have Jaquan Brisker in my top five safeties in this draft class. Now, before we talk about Jaquan, let me give you who my top five are. Number one, Kyle Hamilton, Notre Dame. He's just does it all. You can play him in a lot of different positions in the box. You know, nickel, can play deep, reads the game really well. Not like elite you know, uh, athleticism, but uh, good enough because his instincts are just fantastic. Um, I think he'll probably be some picked between maybe 10 and 16 in the first round. Next up for me, I like Jalen Petrie out of Baylor. I think he's another guy who does it all. Um, not the ideal size compared to like Kyle Hamilton, but man, he forces turnovers, hits guys, gets up there in the run game. I love Jalen Petrie's game. To me, should be a middle of the first round, maybe a little bit later in the first round pick. Third, we got Lewis Seen from Georgia. This guy is just like a rocket and he'll just hit you. You know, gotta love that old school mentality. He might draw some flags, but I think he is going to let people know that he is there, not afraid to hit tight ends, wide receivers, running backs, and he has elite athleticism. So big fan of his game. Number four, I have Daxton Hill from Michigan. Now to me, watching some of his games, I kind of see him more as a nickel back. Don't know if he's going to play that traditional safety spot, possibly, um, and not to diminish the value of a nickel back either, just because you know NFL offenses play with at least three receivers more often than not. So the value is definitely there. Um, I just prefer Lewisine, prefer Petrie and Hamilton compared to Daxon Hill at the safety position. Uh, number five for me would actually be Brian Cook from Cincinnati. Um, I just really love the sure tackling. Um, I think a little bit like Brisker could maybe look to improve on a couple of things, especially, you know, some things in coverage and whatnot. But what I do like a lot, and especially my safeties. And now, I'm coming from the aspect of like the 49ers style defense. So just that ability to make sure you wrap up the tackle is really important. And I think Brian Cook does that better than Brisker. Now, let's talk about Brisker briefly. I watched five games of his from 2021 against Auburn, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Iowa. What I saw a lot of um, was a lot of missed tackles, very inconsistent tackling. Now, I do have to credit there was a game against Wisconsin. Towards the end, he did have that big interception, very solid play by Brisker. Um, but it was kind of like a Hail Mary-ish kind of play from Wisconsin. Game was on the line. So... Um, and I was really, really big fan of what Brisker did on that play. Um, sometimes he does find himself uh, when he, let's say, comes up and runs support where he's there to make the play. But I just saw too many times where he missed the tackle, didn't make it. Then the, whether it's the wide receiver or the running back, they go on to pick up like a good chunk of yards. So that's my big concern right there with Brisker. Now look. I'm not saying he's a bad player by any means. Don't get me wrong. I still think that if he was there at 61, pick 61 for the 49ers, would I be upset if we drafted him? No. Um, there are definitely some you know concerns with his game that I would have. Um, I think similar to kind of Jaquaski Tart, actually. When Jaquaski Tart was drafted out of Samford, um, it was a little bit of a shock pick. I don't think Brisker would be a shock pick for the 49ers in the second round, but I think they'll have similar things to overcome in terms of their development, like taking the right angles, really wrapping up and tackling. It's just so key when you play this zone defense, got to wrap up. And I just, a lot of inconsistencies with Brisker. And to me, that's why he's not in my top five safeties in this draft class. Back to the offensive side of the ball. And now we're talking wide receivers. My number one guy, and I've been saying this for a while now, Traylon Burks, the wide receiver from Arkansas. He is the guy who just stood out to me in all aspects of the game where he does it all. I think to me, he should be the number one wide receiver drafted in uh, next week's NFL draft. He's just fantastic. And he just, I know he just oozes that like confidence, that ability to catch the ball yards after the catch makes the catches in the big moments. You know, um, a number of times I saw it where it was third and six. Everybody knows the ball's going, you know, to Traylon Burks. He runs like a slant route. There's like two or three defenders right around him. Makes the catch, hangs on, gets hit by two guys, still hangs on, gets the first down. Um, makes ridiculous catches, really good at contested catches. 
Um, again, not the fastest guy ever. Um, and of course, this is something that like a lot of people will always say, look, Jerry Rice didn't run a fast 40. Traylon Burks didn't run a fast 40. He kind of showed up to the combine a little bit out of shape in which I could understand that there's maybe a concern there. I just, I don't know. Maybe that's, there could be a number of reasons for that. Um, but to me, when I just see him on the football field compared to the other guys, he is just fantastic. You know, just, uh, man, if, you know, heaven forbid if this whole Debo Samuel thing falls through, if there's one receiver I could pick to replace him in the draft, it is absolutely Traylon Burks. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely, you know, over a lot of the other guys. Now, I think there's, of course value and the other guys I'm not necessarily knocking them by any means to me I'm just building up Traylon Burks as like he should be like for sure a top 10 pick now you know I look at guys like Drake London and some of these other guys they have more specialty roles I almost see where Drake London is that maybe big slot like not you know outrageous athleticism but a really good receiver in his own right um, for what he brings to the table, especially, you know, with that size. Um, Chris Olave, that speed, got to love it. Garrett Wilson, I think to me, Garrett Wilson would actually be the second wide receiver I would take in this draft. Um, but I'm all about Traylon Burks, man. That, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, you look at him play and you can just see his entire game translating to the NFL field. And uh, I think he's going to be really good. I really hope he goes to a great situation where he can accumulate a lot of targets with a good quarterback because, man, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Number four on my list of the most controversial opinions that I have heading into the 2022 NFL Draft. Well, we are going back to the defensive side of the ball. We're also going to go back to the secondary. Now, to me, my number one cornerback is Sauce Gardner from Cincinnati, and I think that's the general consensus. You know, he does it all. Great size, athleticism, talent, ability to tackle, turnovers, all that good stuff. Sauce is awesome. The number two cornerback on my list in the 2022 NFL Draft, or my second favorite cornerback, is where we get a little controversial. So to me, it's not going to be Derek Stingley. It's not going to be Trent McDuffie, not Andrew Booth, not Kyler Gordon, not Roger McCreary. I really, really like Kyer Elam from Florida. Now, why do I like Kyer? So great size, 6'1", 6'2", about 190, 195. So really good size, lightning quick, 4'3", 940. What I also really like about him is his ability to play man-to-man. -man. Now, I think the zone could use maybe a little bit of work, but any defense that runs man-to-man, -man, I could very well, in my opinion, make the argument that they should take Kyer Elam over any other cornerback. One thing that really stood out to me is how players play in the big games. So Florida against Alabama in the 2021 season, Elam had three passes defensed. He had five all year long, but three in the biggest game. He got thrown at quite a lot. And we know how explosive that Alabama offense is. Great quarterback who could potentially be a top five pick next year. Um, and great receivers, Jamison Williams, John Mechie, and he was matched up with them all game long. And I'm going to show a couple of clips here of Kyler, Kyler Elam in coverage. The first one, a great pass breakup on a short, quick pass to Jamison Williams. Show that there. And then also we have a deep pass uh, where they're looking for Jamison Williams deep. And I just love how Kyer Elam uses the sideline to his advantage, kind of pushes Jamison Williams towards the sideline to make it really, really difficult to even have a shot at making the catch on that. Now, he did arguably give up a big touchdown in that game although you know the routes run and you could argue that it wasn't his responsibility and I think that would be a very fair argument but overall I love his ability to play man to man love his he just like talks a lot very confident um reminds me of a Jalen Ramsey I'm not saying he's on his level by any means um even as a prospect I'm not saying he's on that level but uh, I really like Kyer Elam's game if I'm a team and the, my defense runs man-to-man -man defense primarily or looking to do that, um, Kyer Elam would be the number one cornerback actually on my board. Now, of course, I'm not knocking any of these other prospects. I think all the other guys mentioned could easily and very well should be first round picks or at the very least Kyler Gordon, Roger McCreary, Andrew Booth Jr. could be early second round picks. Um, so I do like their games. I just love Kyer Elam's game. The fifth and last most controversial opinion on this list that I have is going to be 
a little bit of a fun one. It's actually going to be punter Matt Ariza. I believe he gets drafted in the third round, um, which would be the highest that a punter has been drafted in a long time. Um, not only that, I'm going to make a prediction and say that I believe the LA Rams draft him with their third round pick. It's going to be their compensatory pick at 104 overall. Now, why would they take a punter in the third round with their first pick in the draft, actually? Because we know the Rams just trade away all their picks. So he would actually be, of course, an immediate starter there. On the roster, they have Riley Dixon, who averaged maybe 44 yards per punt last year um, with the New York Giants, which was good for yeah, 27th, 28th in the NFL. So that's not good. Um, whereas Matt Ariza last year at San Diego State had 51.2 yards per average uh, in terms of per punt, which is just awesome. He also had a long punt of 86 yards, which is just wild, you know. It's one of those things where he could absolutely flip a game with the, just like the field position. Maybe it's one of those close, more defensive battle type games, and his punt could be the, what actually alters the outcome of the game. Uh, you think about an 86-yard punt. If you're punting from your own 10-yard line, you punt it. That would lead them down the other team back to their own 4-yard line, which is just wild. Um, look, again, their roster is fairly loaded, so they're not going to draft or be very unlikely that they would find a starter by any means at that pick. So maybe they look to think, hey, we're in a Super Bowl window. Let's go with the punter, um, someone who could have an immediate impact while we're in this window where we can win more Super Bowls. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't actually hate the pick for them. You know what I mean? Um, not because I'm a 49ers fan. I think it would be a terrible pick. I'm just saying, objectively speaking, I think it would be actually a pretty solid pick. Now, there is one other caveat to this, is that Ariza at San Diego State also was their field goal kicker for most of the time there, if not the entire time he was there, and he was pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty good. So could this be one of the first players who takes on a dual role could he be the punter and the kicker and thus maybe save a roster spot on the Rams? Just something to think about, just throwing that out there. But I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this because this would be really interesting if it happened. And it could be, I don't want to say revolutionary, but it could be something innovative and maybe something worth looking into for other teams. But uh, that is my list of the top five most controversial opinions I have for the upcoming 2022 NFL Draft. Please keep in mind that these are just my opinions. Of course, I'm not saying that it's fact by any means. And a lot of the other players who I actually have ranked maybe behind some of the guys I like or players I've ranked ahead of players I dislike, um, I don't hate those other players. I don't really dislike them. I think, you know, of course, they're going to be very similar talent levels. I just have preferences. And this is just based on what I watch. I think there's a reason why the draft is not an exact science. There's a reason why guys who get drafted in the top 10 overall, a lot of guys bust out and flame out of the league. There's a reason why sometimes later round picks, you know, excel in the NFL. So you just never know. So let's just keep an open mind about that in the comments. But I do want to see your comments on guys, you know, on what you think of my opinions on this. And of course, I'd love to hear your own. Uh, yeah, draft is coming up very quick, and I can't wait to be here to live stream as much of it as I can. So please join me for that. Um, more draft videos coming up, of course, Mock Draft Monday next week. And uh, guys, at this point, I'm going to say two things. The butt counts, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.